What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is time for the Fantasy Draft lineup builder. Uh, the Fantasy Draft, if you've never played it before, has rake-free head-to-heads, which is interesting, which is what I'll be playing if I play uh, Fantasy Draft. I'm not sure I'm going to play this weekend. I may wait till next weekend before I start playing Fantasy Draft. Uh, but Fantasy Draft does have rake-free head-to-heads, which is what you want to take advantage of most when you're over here. They don't have the greatest GPPs and whatnot, but but those rake-free head-to-heads are always nice. But let's hop into the lineup builder here. Pricing is generally double what it is on DraftKings, but it's a little bit easier to build a lineup over here. So we're looking at the Sunday main only slate, and uh, we'll start off with tight end. Want to get the value in here and uh, see how it goes from there. So looks like some actual pretty good value you can get at tight end here. Um, where's my favorite play? My favorite player, Ricky Seals-Jones, coming in at 5,100. So we're just going to lock him on in over here and uh, really boost your salary up. You're at 10,000 per. Or you're, sorry, you're at 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 1. If you lock in my boy Ricky Seals Jones at just 5,100, puts you up to 11,862 per player. We'll get a defense in here now because that'll also boost it up. It's something I like to do on on, on fantasy draft is to lock in the cheap guys first and then go from there. So for defense, hmm. Because you save value. So like Ricky Seal Jones in the 50k salary, he's 2800 which is saving me about 500 bucks over here uh, compared to what he should be doubled up to. Like the Titans are 44k. I think they're 2300 That's saving me 6k over, or 600 based on the uh, DraftKings pricing. You can even get some really cheap like the Bills defense at 3600 Obviously, 1800 is not a real price on DraftKings, so you're saving money on there. Uh, the main slate over here, let me for, let me also get this in. The main slate on Fantasy Draft does, in fact, does, in fact, include the Sunday night slate, or Monday, Sunday night game. So you will see the New England Patriots and the Detroit Lions defenses. What is the Patriots defense looking like? 5,400? No way. As of right now, I really like the Titans defense against the Jags. So we're going to go ahead and put in the Titans defense. I don't believe we got any news on Leonard Fournette yet. I think he remains questionable. Uh, he was limited at practice. Okay, so I expect him to play being limited. But we're up to 12, almost 13K per player. And uh, now we're going to go to the running back position. And I'll show you a value right off the bat here. And that is Gio Bernard coming in at 10-4. It's a nice value off of his price on DraftKings. It's not quite the double the price, uh, which is really nice. And it looks like most of the prices over here are a little bit lower than the double that they usually are. If you've played a lot of fancy draft for baseball and basketball, they're a lot of the times really close to just being double DraftKings. But over here for football, it looks like they have a little bit of their own pricing going on. And while it is double... There is some value to be had. So, Gio Bernard, we're going to put him in the lineup. It brings it up to 13 4, 16 average remaining salary. I've already talked about why I love Gio Bernard with no Joe Mixon. Should be involved heavily in the passing game. I would expect somewhere between 6 to 8 targets from him. If he can convert, you know, 5 of those into catches, you're looking at a nice floor of 8 points-ish for Gio Bernard, I would say. Moving on, if... Uh, if Leonard Fournette happens to be out, I really like TJ Yeldon, but we don't know that for sure yet, so I'm not going to put him into the lineup. Another really good value over here is Adrian Peterson at 9-7 against the Packers. I think they should run him a decent amount against the Packers, try to keep it away from Aaron Rodgers. Um, so I do like the idea of Adrian Peterson. Lamar Miller, also an interesting proposition at 9-2. Uh, should see all the, ba the backfield work. Um, he has through the first two games. Can we update this? Can we update this picture of Lamar Miller over here? He saw a little bit less carries last week against Tennessee, but if he's going to be seeing somewhere in the 18-ish touches range, and they can find and he can find the end zone, I like him to pay off the nine 
two salary over here on fantasy draft there's also some touchdown hunters if you want to go for it like royce freeman at eight four uh, philip Lindsay at eight three Lindsay's not really a touchdown hunter he's actually getting most of the work over royce freeman um he's been extremely efficient so that kind of concerns me but uh philip Lindsay is an interesting play over here uh austin eckler interesting probably wouldn't go there uh but coming back up top for me the play is tevin coleman with uh with Devontae Freeman out, 12K for Tevin Coleman is a very fair price in the Dome game. Should be a high-scoring game between Atlanta and New Orleans. I do like Dev I like Tevin Coleman. I believe Freeman has not um, has not been officially ruled out for Sunday, but it's looking very doubtful that he plays. He's expected to miss two to three weeks. He's only missed one so far. So we're going to go ahead and throw Tevin Coleman in the line. Brings us up to 13,700 remaining. You do get the two flexes over here on uh, Fantasy Draft. Only two wide receivers instead of the three. Uh, so you can have four running backs over here for uh, for an interesting build. Or you can go very contrarian with four wide receivers. Moving on to the quarterback. Um, Tom Brady at 13-7. I do really like. I can't believe Kirk Cousins is the most expensive quarterback over here. Um, and you do get a nice value price on Drew Brees at 11-5. Seems just slightly low for Drew Brees. Um, I do like Tom Brady, but I won't be going there in this build. If we come down to the bottom here, there's a really nice uh, price on Cam Newton. I like his price on DraftKings a little bit more um, than I do over here on Fantasy Draft, but that's still a really nice price for him. Uh, where's my boy Matt Ryan? Uh, they price him up over here in comparison... Oh yeah, they see this is another discrepancy. Uh, Matt Ryan is priced up over here on Fantasy Draft, opposed to DraftKings, where he's a much cheaper price on DraftKings at only fifty seven hundred. They were ahead of that. He's priced ahead of Drew Brees. Um, I'm either I think I'm gonna go Drew Brees on Fantasy Draft at only eleven five. It's a very fair price for Drew Brees. And uh, I think he's your cash game quarterback over here on Fantasy Draft. I don't really have a whole lot of interest in him at 6'4 on DraftKings. I like him, but I doubt I would, I'll would. play him over there on DraftKings. So I think Fantasy Draft is the place to play Drew Brees. Moving all over to wide receiver, we've got 14,250 left in the tank for players here. Top options are Michael Thomas and Julio Jones on the week. You can lock them in. Gives you about 11.7 remaining in salary. Can lock in the two top options here. I think Julio is going to get Shadow Marcus Lattimore, so I'm not sure how much I love Julio for uh, cash games. I do like Michael Thomas, and with Drew Brees, we're going to leave Michael Thomas locked in here. Um, and while I like I like Julio, um, I think I'm going to reserve Julio for more GPPs than cash games. Um, we're going to be heading down here to find. Uh, the value play to go with Michael Thomas. Probably not a cash game play over here on Fantasy Draft, but an interesting play nonetheless this week. If he is all cleared to go and we figure out that he's 100% healthy, oh, is he not available on Fantasy Draft? Oh, he's not available on Fantasy Draft. That's tragic. I was going to say if Josh Gordon was good to go and he had a fair price, I'd pay it for him. But... He is not available on Fantasy Draft, so don't have to worry about that. Have to go down here and find ourselves another little bit of value. I would have assumed he would have been value on Fantasy Draft. But plenty of guys in this range for us to find. Probably my favorite is Tyler Lockett here at 10 7 very fair price for Tyler Lockett over here on Fantasy Draft. While there's other guys in this range like D.D. Westbrook, none of them are the number one wide receiver like Tyler Lockett is. Geronimo Allison at four, at 8300 is an extreme value. I think he would probably be my lock-in over here on Fantasy Draft. Um, go back to wide receiver. There's just no one in his range that even competes with the uh the value that he's been playing now Kenny Galladay is interesting he seems to be Stafford's favorite target with six receptions and seven receptions in the game so far 
I might consider him over here um, with this matchup against New England because of Stephon Gilmore getting the number one wide receiver. Um, I'm assuming he'll be on Marvin Jones, which should leave Golden Tate and Kenny Galladay open. So I might over here just because he's not available on the main slate take a shot on Kenny Galladay in my cash games. Uh, should see a decent amount of volume. I'm not sure I'm expecting 20 points from him or anything, but I think it's pretty solid value. So for me personally with cash games, I like to have running backs in my flex. So we're going to be paying for running backs, but I want to look at this. So I want to put Coleman in the flex and Gio Bernard in the flex. Gio Bernard at 10-4. And then we can start with our running back. So favorite running back on the week is Alvin Kamara. I think he has an enormous week. So at 17-6, I think it's a very fair price to, to plop him into cash games, especially over here on Fantasy Draft. It leaves you 14000 left, which is kind of an iffy price zone. Uh, you may have to finagle a couple of things if you want a Dalvin Cook or an Ezekiel Elliott to go with. I think my favorites would be Melvin Gordon and Christian McCaffrey to go along with Alvin Kamara as my running backs. I don't think you're getting up to Todd Gurley unless you want to sacrifice Michael Thomas. I don't really want to sacrifice Michael Thomas. Uh, Gurley has been um, relatively, I mean, last week he, he got pulled because he was injured, but his attempts have been, I mean, good, but he's he's been extremely efficient through the air. And last week he got there with touchdowns. So... I kind of still waiting and seeing with Gurley. This RP, this offense is high-powered, and it has a lot of weapons, so I'm not sure exactly how cash game viable Gurley is going to be. Oh, well, I guess when Mark Ingram comes back, Todd Gurley will be the pay-up. It'll just be depend if you want to pay up for him. I think this week a very interesting option is David Johnson. I'm not sure he's quite cash game viable, but, but... I think it's a very, I don't know, there was some coach speak about how they wanted to get him out in space more, get him more reception, line him up at wide receiver a little bit more. Now, I don't know how much they're actually going to follow through with that, but it is an interesting it is an interesting note to make about David Johnson. I'm not playing Dalvin Cook. I'm kind of worried about his workload. I just don't really want to go there. If I had to choose, it would be the Gordon McCaffrey. I think it'd be Melvin Gordon for the pass game work against the the Rams. I think they'll allow him to get some dump off passes, and if he's going to get you know six to nine receptions somewhere around there, uh, it gives you a really nice floor. It puts us eleven hundred dollars over, so we'd have to find some value to be able to make this all work. Um, probably would have to go down off the defense, and then probably just be able to go down off of Drew Brees to be honest you have the exposure to Drew Brees with Kamara and Michael Thomas so you could go down well we got 10-4 really dumpster diving at that point I'd like to get up to Andrew Luck probably I mean it's kind of hard then you're like not that far away from having Drew Brees so probably would step down from probably step down from Tevin Coleman to be honest step down from Tevin Coleman you got 10-9 left gives you a lot of options I could go with my Tyler Lockett pick I do really like Lockett um feels a little bit pricey for Tyler Lockett and he's had touchdown equity but he is a number one offense um or number one option in that offense I think he should grab seven balls uh, against the Cowboys I do love my running backs, uh, but I don't like Jay Ajayi. So it'd probably be Matt Breida. If I if I went running back, it'd probably be Matt Breida in this area or Yeldon. If Fournette's out, Yeldon's the easy plug in there. Uh, but if not, it's Breida or, or it's Tyler Lockett. We'll put in Lockett for the sake of this build, but that's going to do it, guys, for the Fantasy Draft Breakdown. It's it's generally the same thoughts, but it's kind of you're able to jam in more of your favorite plays over here, so you can get Kamara, Breeze, Thomas, and like Melvin Gordon. I don't think theoretically I, you can get it on DraftKings, but I don't think you can get it 
with as good of a lineup with like Kenny Galladay and Tyler Lockett and Gio Bernard. I don't think you can get that with with Breeze and whatnot over on DraftKings. But that's going to do it for the episode, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you guys in the next uh, DFS video. Peace out.